happy birthday. Only Fools and Horses is 40 years old and it started here. Boom, this is Nelson Mandela Tower. Well, actually, it's Beaumaris Tower in West Acton or North Acton. I'm not sure, but it's Beaumaris Tower anyway. Uh, some say that it was Harlech Tower, but it was definitely, definitely, in the opening credits, it was definitely Beaumaris Tower that was used with the little yellow van at the bottom and it panned up to the block of flats uh, in the opening credits, just as it started, okay? Um, other scenes were filmed here as well. I'm going to walk around the building and I'm going to tell you exactly what was filmed and where it was filmed. I'm so excited. Happy birthday, only fools and horses. All right, so I'm in Chapel Market and I want to show you this photo. This one here. And it's looking down Chapel Market from just above where I'm standing at the moment. The photo would have been taken up there, looking, looking down that way. Um, and those of you that are familiar with the episode, the way it starts, uh, you can see a, uh, a Woolworth sign. A Woolworth sign, and I'll show you where Woolworth used to be. It's a Waitrose now. But back in the day, 40 years ago, it would have been a Woolworths. And the sign would have been up there. So the shot would have been taken from up there, looking down this way. And you can still see, they still have a market here. You can see that they've got the, uh, the pitches marked out on the road here for the stall holders to set up in the morning. So that would have been the very first shot of Only Fools and Horses, would have been looking down here from up there. Right, let's go and find uh, some other locations. All right, this is my second location in Chapel Market. Um, I'm in Northwest Place, and I'm looking diagonally opposite those little windows there. And at the beginning, when they show the different snapshots of the market, they show uh, this photo. and. They're just out of shot there, but there's a couple of windows, but I can actually see the windows up there. So this is another location where um, the pictures at the beginning of Only Falls and Horses, this is one of the locations that one of those photos was taken. Right, here's another location, still on Chapel Market. And behind me, this, that means nothing to you, but if I showed you that and you see the word singer, that there, that's where it would have had that singer sign. Number 23, Chapel Market. So the photo of that would have been taken just across the road from where I'm standing. Which is just... Over here. And there you go. Something... Something like that. Ah, it's, a, it's a travel agency now. They, uh, they don't sell sewing machines anymore. Right, let's go find another one. I'm in central London, as you can see, I'm just outside Holborn Tube Station here, and at the very opening credits of Only Fools and Horses, this location was featured. I think it's when they do the, the, the stills of Rodney at the beginning, but if I just turn the camera around slightly, you notice that archway there, and then the windows in the background there, you can see that this is the location. There was a restaurant on the corner there, I think it was Eden Restaurant, but this is the, uh, the location for that, and I'm just outside uh, Holborn Station in, uh, in central London. So, behind me, the, uh, the Angel Curry Centre is, uh, is an Indian restaurant, but it never used to be an Indian restaurant. In fact, 40 years ago, they used to sell bags in there. And in the very first episode, the very first episode of Only Fools and Horses, where Del Boy is trying to get shot of all those briefcases that he can't open, um, he goes in there to try and get rid of them. And uh, there's, there's a picture there of Del walking into number five, number five Chapel Market. So there you go. So, if you want to visit a location that was in Only Fools and Horses and get something to eat at the same time, come down to the Angel Curry Centre. Right, so Chapel Market's behind me. This is the junction of uh, White Conduit Street. And just down White Conduit Street, if I just turn the camera around, you'll see that behind me, boom, is another location. And this was used in the episode Big Brother, where Del Boy's trying to get rid of his uh, briefcases that he can't open because he hasn't got the combination for them. And he parked his van just here and uh, it goes into the shop, uh, obviously they don't buy him, so he comes out again and goes off to another location. But yep, this is definitely a location for Big Brother in Series 1 of Only Fools and Horses. Right, so this location was actually used for Boyce's very first car lot, and it's quite nice to see that there's still, there were still cars around. In fact, next door, they probably used the whole of this area along the front here, uh, but it's been divided up now into different companies. Uh, there's an, actually an Enterprise car lot there now, but when they're on the forecourt, and uh, Del Boy and Boise and uh, Rodney. Rodney are there and they're trying to buy the car with the dodgy brakes and they agree to hide the Jag in uh, one of Del's spare garages. <laughs> the Jag that uh, Boise's bought for his, uh, for his bit on the side. They're standing around this location here. 
and it's quite nice because there's a printer's behind Boise and uh, Delboy where they're standing there's a bus and if you look through the bus windows in the background you can see that there's a printer's and, and there's still a printer's here so yeah uh, Bo Boyce is not here anymore Boyce has moved on but this location where I'm at at the moment was the original original location for Boise this shot that you can see behind me here just with uh, Bomaris Tower there this is uh, in the episode uh, Go West Young Man this is the episode that Rodney came tearing around the corner in the car park with the dodgy brakes come hacking it around here uh, and went off down there all right so this location um, is featured in uh, Go West Young Man right at the end of the episode where Dell and Rodney they've taken uh, Boyce's Jag out for the night driving along the road they realize that they've thrown out a cigar packet with the the girl's telephone number on so Dell slams his brakes on uh, just here and it gets rear-ended by the car with the dodgy brakes that they'd sold earlier in the episode and it's just outside um, a dance studio it's, it's changed name but it's, this is still a dance studio and where I am at the moment, what I'm standing on, they've actually built the pavement out because it was a lay-by where they'd had the accident was actually in a bus lane or a lay-by and what they've done is they've bought the pavement out now and, uh, but that is where, basically where that pavement is is where the two cars were and then Dylan Rodney legs it. <laughs> so this next location, this is the hotel that Vimal was uh, supposedly staying at in the episode of uh, Cash and Curry, the one with the Buddhas, and uh, <laughs> that's the staircase that Dell would have fallen down. And uh, but surprisingly, uh, managed to catch uh, the the Buddha and not having it break. So anyway, so this is the episode Cash and Curry. Uh, from series one, and this was Vimal Hotel. All right, so I'm on Chapel Market again, and I'm at Godson Street, and this location actually features in an episode in series two, but I'll come to that later. Uh, but for now, this was used in the opening sequence for the episode Second Time Around, where Dell and Rodney are standing here and they're selling packs of tights, I think it is. And Rodney's trying to sell them uh, one for the price of two. <laughs> anyway, Dell goes to get himself a drink and Rodney says, while you're gone, can you get us a packet of pork scratchings? But this is, this is the location that that was filmed. All right, so this location behind me, this is Auntie Rose's uh, cottage from the episode uh, Second Time Around, where Dell, Grandad and Rodney do a runner because um, oh, Dale's fiance Pauling uh, they, they think that it, uh, she's going to poison him because <laughs> she's already done in two husbands and Dale's going to be the third and uh, so this is the location and apparently Auntie Rose lives in Clacton which well, she don't, she lives in Acton and this is, this is the uh, property now what's quite nice is this gate this gate and this pillar here and that white top on there that's actually in shot when Dale gets out the van so the van would have been parked here I can't park here because there's a double yellow line but Del, Del's fan would have been parked there. He jumped out, he walked up to the front door, and there's a great shot of Del walking out the van. And uh, this, this, this looks like the actual gate that was in the episode, so it's over 40 years old. Um, so yeah, it's uh, not Clacton, it's Acton. And this is Auntie Rose's cottage from second time around. So I'm in my next location, and I just want to get those buildings in shot there so you can see what they are, just for reference, because they, they do feature in the episode. But I'm just walking along this road here and in the episode Slow Bus to Chingford I've actually managed to park but considering this is quite a busy road and there's cars parked on both sides I've actually managed to park my van exactly where the bus was parked uh, in the episode and this this <laughs> I'm pretty sure this lamppost is in it let me find a picture There's Del with a lamppost behind him. So I'm parked, parked right next to it. So yeah, this is this is the location for um, where the bus was parked in Slow Bus to Chingford. So I'm standing at one of the entrances to Bomaris Tower and just behind where the camera is at the moment, that's where the bus pulled up in the episode Slow Bus to uh, Chingford. Uh, so that's where the bus was. Uh, they left it there, they got out. Del had had a bet with Grandad and he'd paid out Grandad the money. And Grandad and Rodney stood over here. They stood here. And, uh, and Grandad said to Rodney, where's Dell? And Dell was in the bin cupboard. He was, he was in the bin cupboard getting rid of the... 
the sign. And Granddad goes, oh no, not the bin cupboard. And Del, oh, hang on a minute, there's something on the floor. Yeah. Yeah, I just found these on the floor. Granddad must have chucked them in the chute. Naughty Granddad. Anyway, this, this is where that was, uh, this is where that was filmed. And then Del obviously finds the leaflets, he comes out and he chases Granddad up the stairs, chucking the leaflets at him. Uh, don't worry, I'll pick them up. Just so excited to be standing outside. And again, this is Beaumaris Tower and not Harlech Tower, which is, which is over that way. All right, so this location where I'm at now, if you look at all these old buildings behind me, uh, these were in the background of the episode, um, the Russians are coming. So right at the very beginning, Dell takes Rodney to a pile of bricks that he's just bought from a factory which has been demolished. And underneath this pile of bricks, there's a box of lead, lead sheets. And Dell reckons there's another 30 boxes under there. But by the time they get it all back to the flat, Rodney's found a leaflet or a brochure, which actually tells them that what they've got is a build it yourself nuclear bomb shelter. But apparently that was it. That's actually um, Is Islington Police Station behind there. And just down that way, just over that way, a couple of minutes walk, is Chapel Market. So I'm just walking around to the other side of Beaumaris Tower now, uh, to this door here, because in the episode when the Russians are coming, this is the door that Dell and uh, Rodney ran out of, and they would have run along that path there. This is a new path, it's being done up. And across the road there, where you see those houses, the brick brick houses, uh, they were garages. Um, so they, they ran out of there and the three-wheeler would have been parked uh, where the, the silver estate car is there. They'd have got to the car, realised that Grandad wasn't with them, so they went back, grabbed hold of Grandad, dragged him down the road where he lost his shoes and chucked him in the back of the motor. So this is the other side of Bomaris Tower. Alright, I'm at one end of Ridley Avenue at the junction of Midhurst Road and Former Way. And if we just come back this way just a little bit so you can see the junction. Uh, this was used in the episode, uh, The Russians Are Coming. And this is where Dale Boy speeds up to the junction, slams his brakes on, says to Rodney, is it all clear? And Rodney, he's got a great big map in his hands. He looks down from the map and says to Dale, after the red one. So a red car goes past, <laughs> Dale pulls out and slams his anchors on because there's another red one coming along. And Rodney says something along the lines of, not that red one, that red one. And then uh, Dale Boy calls him a tit. <laughs> but anyway, this is the location for that very near accident. What's it like your side, Rodney? You tit. Right, so I'm just at the top of uh, Ridley Avenue um, at the junction with Northcroft Avenue. And just down there, Ridley Avenue, that's where the bus was parked for the episode Slow Bus to uh, Chingford. But this road here, Northcroft Avenue, at the top of that junction there, this road is where Dell came speeding down in the episode The Russians Are Coming. And it's at that junction over there, Green Avenue, where the police car uh, pulled out and gave chase and they went off down there. <laughs> I'm not sure if that was someone cheering only for the horses or the fact that a police car gave chase. So this location that I'm in now um, was featured in the episode The Russians Are Coming. So Dell and Rodney, they've got Grandad in the back of the van and they are trying to time themselves to see if they can get to the nuclear shelter uh, in the four minutes. And they get pulled over by the police and they actually get pulled over. So my van is parked there, but they would have got pulled over about here. Now this would have been an old factory, obviously all knocked down and redeveloped and we've got a housing area there now. But I know it to be this point here because uh, when the camera uh, chops and changes, you get a shot of the uh, police officer chatting with Dell, and behind him, you get this house here. And this is actually in shot, and the door number's in shot as well, and this is number 78. So I know that directly opposite this door is where the police car was that pulled over Dell. So the police car would have been about there, and Dell would have been about there. So, um, yeah, so this is another location that was in Only Falls and Horses, and this one was. Uh, the Russians are coming. So I've still got loads more to do. But I thought you'd like to see this one. So I'm standing outside uh, Cafe 51, which is 
an external shot of one of Sid's calves from the episode Long Legs of the Law. And uh, it, Adele's van can be seen parked outside here. And it's, it's just for a few seconds. Adele's van's parked outside. You see the calf behind it. And then the obviously the interior is done in the studio or elsewhere. But this is this is actually a real calf, so it would have been quite nice if it was open to so have gone in there and get a bacon sarnie. Uh, but it's not. So there you go. Anyway, it is a location. It's actually it's an actual calf as well. So uh, comes down and uh, get yourself a bite to eat there. Right, I'm off to the next location. Where I'm standing here, th this floor, this floor would have been swept by a trigger. And trigger would have been sweeping along here. This is episode t uh, two of the second series. I think it was um, Ashes to Ashes. I think it was the second second episode of the second series. Anyway, the episode was Ashes to Ashes. And at the beginning, Rodney and Dell are standing on this corner here and they're trading. And if I show you the picture, you can see the three of them standing there. See that building behind Rodney? And that's the building just down the way there. And if you see the other shot of uh, Dell and Rodney, that's looking the other way. That's that's from that from behind the camera looking across there. You know what I mean? But uh, where the three of them were stood was just here, just in this spot here. And this is where um, Trigger invited Dell to um, Trigger's grandmother's funeral and then Dell invited Rodney and they were going to be the only ones there but this is the location but that happened there should be some plaques up for this sort of stuff surely or is it just me that gets excited by all this I'm sure it's not just me anyway that's another location ticked off the list so um, in the episode Ashes to Ashes Dell and Rodney are actually walking along this path here and Dell stops just outside this front garden here uh, there's a there's a, um, a cement mixer and he stands there and he ponders and he's thinking about throwing the ashes in and the, the workman comes along from the side, down the side of the house here and, uh, and, and Del remarks something along the lines of uh, they're marvellous aren't they these uh, Irish tumble dryers <laughs> and he carries on and he meets up with Rodney who's standing just by this uh, just by this telegraph pole here and uh, Rodney says you weren't were you and he goes no what do you think I'm a philistine or something and then they uh, they carry off and uh, yeah I think the next scene after that is where the urn gets sucked up by the by the road sweeper. So this location behind me, um, you may not recognise it, uh, where that garage is now. There were some green uh, wooden gates at the time. But if I said to you the episode Ashes to Ashes, uh, you could probably picture Dell and Rodney now sat on this curbside, uh, wondering what to do with the ashes, and of course the. Uh, the road sweeper comes along here and uh, and sweeps up the ashes but, and this is the location uh, that it happened um, there's quite a nice uh, shot looking up at uh, Rodney as he as he gets up to walk away and this gate uh, albeit that the gate has changed but the pillars are still there and uh, yeah it's it, it's almost as it was back in the day apart from the fact that they've built a garage in their garden and got rid of the the wooden gates so the location I'm at at the moment this is Brownco Road and um, there's a lot of development going on in the area and you probably heard that they're I think they're going to be demolishing uh, Beaumaris Tower at some point um, which is just around the corner from where I'm at at the moment it's not far at all but you can see just in the background there that there is a block of flats that they are demolishing the whole area is being revamped uh, so sadly that is the future of Beaumaris Tower um, anyway carrying on so I'm on Branca Road and uh, series 2 episode no greater love and uh, this is one where Dell goes out and he's selling bits and pieces uh, you, you, you know the episode um, and uh, Dell's van is parked outside number 20 so there's my van <laughs> get some advertising in there's my van which is parked outside number 16 uh, Dell's van was actually parked outside number 20 in the episode and then Rodney goes off with his uh, suitcase full of his wares and he goes down to Irene's house and Irene lives at number 30 so I'm just going to walk down now and uh, and I'll show you outside number 30 where Irene lived there you go outside Irene's house from the episode No Greater Love series 2 of Only Fought and Horses so as with a lot of uh, locations, you know, they've changed over the years. And this one, uh, this behind me, this used to be Mr. Chin's restaurant uh, from the episode The Yellow Peril. So, um, 
yeah, this is the one that they painted the kitchen bright yellow and uh, the door opened, they let the cat out and unfortunately number 39 was off the menu. Um, in the episode you do actually see that there's a news agent next door, so it's, it's quite nice to see that the news agent is, is still there, albeit that it's all changed, the front, the front of it's changed, but not as much as the front of this has changed. Uh, and it looks quite recent as well. Um, but this is, this is it, 119 Oaklands Road. This is where Mr. Chin's restaurant used to be. Right, on to the next one. So I'm standing outside Walpole Park. And uh, these are the gates that, um, at the end of the episode, The Yellow Peril, they drive down to these gates, which are supposed to be the gates to the, uh, the cemetery. And these are the gates when they're closed. These are the ones that the uh, the three of them, Grandad, uh, Delboy, and Rodney, look through and see the grave illuminated, illuminate yellow um, in the distance. But it's not it's not a cemetery. It's not a graveyard. It's actually a rather nice park. So uh, yeah, it's another location ticked off the list. So where am I now? I'll tell you where I am. I'm still in North London, N1 actually. And um, if I show you this picture. This is a picture of uh, Trotter's van parked out what was, I think, the very first exterior shot of the Nags Head. And if I turn around, oh, there it is. It's called the, uh, the Three Johns. Now, I don't think it was ever called the Nags Head. <laughs> but it's, it's a really busy pub, as you can see. But, but there's the motor. There's the motor. Park. Right outside. So I'm going to put all of the location details for all of these locations that I put. I'll put all the details at the bottom of the video. You've probably seen it already. But anyway, just behind me, just up there, that's Chapel Market. That's HMS Belfast. That was in uh, Only Fools and Horses um, uh, Season 2 Christmas Special. Uh, Diamonds of the Heather. And that's where Del Boy took Heather. Up there. And that's as close as I'm going to get to it today. When I was a lad, an old chap was a pup. Over hills and meadows we'd stray, just a boy and his dog, having lots of fun. We were brought up together that way. No, I'm not doing the whole song. That's all I've learned. Anyway, I'm standing outside the location from the episode Diamonds of Forever. So it's the episode where uh, Dell proposes to uh, Heather. And she turns him down, he leaves the restaurant, he's feeling very sorry for himself, and he walks back to his, uh, his van, which is parked uh, just over there, uh, just in front of where my van's actually parked, where that black car is. So his van would have been parked there. So he, he walks back to his van and he notices over here there's a group of carol singers. So he approaches them and he asks them to sing Old Shep, which they do. <laughs> and I'm just gonna change the angle a little bit. It's, it's all overgrown, but uh, this wall is actually in the, uh, is in the scene is in the shot rather and this wall is actually the um, a beer garden there's a beer garden behind there for a pub which is quite nice uh, anyway Dell gets in his van which as I said was parked just across there and uh, and he drives off and he drives around the corner and he drives off down there so once again this is a location for the carol singers for the episode Diamonds of the Heather all right so where I'm at now is a location for the nags head that was used in the episode um, who's a pretty boy then and was actually uh, mike's first episode in series three so just behind on the corner there i don't know if you can see there's a red post box and Dell would have come around that at the beginning of the episode he would have come around that he would have driven along here and he actually parked pretty much where my van is there um, brendan o'shaughnessy's van uh, the irish painter and decorator was in front of him and in that door there was the door to the nags head and in the episode, this is the one where Dell puts in a, a, a higher quote to have the nags head uh, decorated. Uh, but they give the job to Brendan O'Shaughnessy anyway, and Mike and Dell boy split the profits. So anyway, this is a location for a nags head. Um, although all you see is the door. <laughs> you don't see any pub signage outside. So I'm at Ravenscroft Park. Um, West London and I'm in a location where uh, the episode when one door closes where Del Boy borrows two grand off of Denzil and uh, for the Louvre doors and then the whole deal falls through and uh, and they spot this butterfly and they chase it and uh, this is the pond this is the pond that Rodney goes in to to get it 
and this little bit here this is where i'm standing here this is where this is where del boy and uncle albert stood and this is the spot where del went denzil i've got your money and behind me here along that that's where denzil come skating down slaps del in the hand and off he goes and obviously he kills the butterfly but this is the location for that scene and it's Ravenscroft Park in uh, West London. It's beautiful here. It's beautiful. Unfortunately, I can't I can't go in the pond. There's signs up saying don't go in there. So I'm not going to go in there. But anyway, this is the location. And I uh, thought you'd like to see it. On to the next one. Well, I've just come out of Best Buy's. I was hoping that I was going to be the one millionth customer, but I wasn't. But I did pick this up second hand. Probably someone's written over it. Uh, Lennox Gilby and uh, The Shadow. Don't know what that means. <laughs> anyway, uh, you probably guessed it. I'm outside the location that was used for the episode The Longest Night, where The Shadow comes along and uh, takes Del Boy and uh, Uncle Albert and Rodney as hostage and holds them there uh, for the night because they think that they're going to uh, rob, rob the safe, basically. But uh, because... Lennox Gilby, his mum bought him a dodgy watch from the market, he turns up late and everything goes wrong, so they have to spend the night in the security office. But this is the location where Del Boy, Uncle Albert, they walk out of the supermarket and they get stopped by the security guy that takes them up to the office and that's where they spend their longest night. Um, there, is, there is a poster in the window there, I don't know if you can see it, but I put that there. I put that there, hoping that no one goes in and thinks that they're going to be the one millionth customer, because uh, I'm going to take that with me when I go. But this is the location for the, for the Longest Night, which is uh, an episode in Series 5 of Only Fools and Horses. It's not Best Buy, it's actually a Matalan. Yeah. Alright, so this building behind me, try and get it all in shot, that's the Theatre Royal, I'm in Drury Lane in London. And this is the location that was used in A Royal Flush, where Rodney brings Victoria to the theatre to see Carmen, a gala performance. And uh, Del managed to get them the tickets, although Rodney said it was him that managed to do it. And Del turned up with uh, Junie, who Rodney thought was a stripper gram. And June, if you remember, is the mother of Debbie that used to work in your news agents that was once a girlfriend of Rodney's. So here we are, so I'm just outside. It's just had a complete renovation done. And they've not long reopened with a new production of uh, Frozen. But these steps here, these are the ones that uh, Junie and Del, they all came out at the end of the evening. Junie had been sick. <laughs> she came out with a uh, St John's ambulance driver and she says to him thank you doctor <laughs> but these doors down the end here these are the ones that they went in originally I'm going to take you through and the box office used to be just inside here I'll show you where the box office used to be so the box office used to be there and then Rodney and Victoria walked up those uh, stairs there and went through uh, to the bar which is where they met up with Del and uh, June once um, Rodney and Victoria had got in the Rolls Royce and driven off, June and Del Boy, they walked, they walked down here. Um, obviously, these weren't all here at the time, but they just walked off down here into the night. And they, they walked past this bit here, and they carried on walking off down there. And I think after that, Rodney ended up going away for the weekend, and that's when uh, Del Boy He's got the shotgun that he got from Iggy Higgins. I love, love that episode. It's a Christmas episode, if I remember rightly. So yeah, so this is the Fifth Royal Drury Lane, a location for a royal flush for only fools and horses. All right, you can probably tell by the clock above me that I'm at Waterloo Station, which was used in the episode Dates. And it was under this, this clock where Derek Duval met Raquel Turner for the very first time. So I'm going to go and stand, come with me, I'm going to go and stand under it right now. I'll try and keep, I'll try and keep it in shot. There you go. Come and stand under the clock with me. <laughs> Don't look the same there, does it? Anyway, so that, that's the clock. And uh, yeah, that's, that's where um, Raquel kept Del waiting for about 45 minutes. I think she turned up at 12.45. Uh, before that, Del had gone and spoken to a, a hooker by a, uh, by a photo machine. And then when Raquel approached him, he, uh, he basically told her to move on because one of her mates nearly got nicked. 
but this is the location. There was a road running right the way through it. The road's not there anymore. But, uh, yep, that's the clock from the episode date. Only falls and horses. All right, I'm currently at the Grove in West London, junction of Oxford Road. And behind me is the restaurant where the deal was done with Arnie. And uh, he was in there with his gold chain, uh, handcuffed to his uh, wrist. Uh, I've got a bone to pick with him actually, because I bought, I bought a suitcase myself of uh, gold chains, but uh, uh, not very happy with that. Uh, anyway, he's in there, Dale's in there, sat at the table with uh, Boise, both sat on the same side. And uh, Mike's car was parked over there where my van is, and I'm standing in the spot where Dale's van would have been parked. So Rodney and Uncle uh, Albert were in the van watching in that way and Mike and the gang watching in that way until obviously Arnie has a heart attack <laughs> Boise tries rifling through his pockets to find the key to the handcuff Dale frog marches him out of the uh, the restaurant pretending to be uh, the police <laughs> and then Mike and the, the gang come over here to find out what's going on and while they're over here Mike's car gets clamped anyway it all went on outside this location here at the Grove for the episode Chain Gang, Series 6 of Only Fools and Horses. So I'm at my next location, I'm, a, I'm just on a high road at the moment, so you may find it difficult to hear me, but I'm standing outside the Ealing Christian Centre, and you're probably thinking to yourself, well I don't remember the Ealing Christian Centre being in episodes of Only Fools and Horses. Uh, well the exterior wasn't, but the interior was, for a very special episode, for Jolly Boys out in this, interior this is the Mardi Gras nightclub where Raquel and the great Ramondo were performing um, so I, I am going to try and get in but I'll be honest with you it looks like it's all closed up but let's go and find out so I can't actually believe this what a lucky chap I am I'm actually inside um, well let's face it it's the Mardi Gras club there, there was a bar along the back there uh, that's that's now gone but um, but the stage is still there and that is where uh, Raquel and the great Ramondo would have done their magic act and Del Boy would have been sat uh, just down here in this location here and, uh, and, and he'd have been shouting over to Raquel Psst, Raquel! Raquel! So it's, it's beautiful I guess it's unchanged, unchanged uh, at all in here since they filmed it uh, but to think that this is the Mardi Gras club for the, for the Jolly Boys outing episode is, this is very very special and uh, I'm very honoured to have been allowed to come in here today and film this. So, what a treat. What a treat. There you go, Mardi Gras. Right there. Jolly boys out in. Enjoy. Right, going underneath the Tower Bridge on the Thames. <laughs> and this, uh, this is featured in a couple of episodes of Only Fools and Horses. So in the episode, He Ain't Heavy, he's my uncle, where Uncle Albert uh, leaves and leaves them a note because of what Del said to him the night before. There's a great shot of the Trapperville going in one direction and the three-wheeler going in the other direction as Del and Rodney go out looking for him. Um, and where I am about now is where, in the episode, Ashes to Ashes, Del was going to throw the ashes over the, uh, the boat and the river police come along and ask if they have permission and even though Dale said he would be Buddhist uh, that wasn't good enough so the river police escorted them back to back to shore so they had to get rid of them somewhere else so this is two locations in one so here I am travelling past HMS Belfast again and this was also used in He Ain't Heavy, He's My Uncle where Del and Rodney go out searching for Uncle Albert and Rodney goes on board the ship this time and he's looking for Uncle Albert up the top there. So yeah, another location for He Ain't Heavy is my uncle. So where am I today? I'll tell you where I am today. I'm in North London and behind me is the church where um, Damien was christened in the episode Miami Twice. In the first episode Miami Twice, this is where Damien was christened. It's closed at the moment, but I'm going to go around the back to see if I can find a few bottles of uh, blessed wine or something. So, uh, yeah. if another one ticks off my list. All right, so I'm staying on a high road here, and there's a lot of traffic going past, so I'm hoping you can hear me all right. Uh, behind me is a rather large pub, which uh, is called the Middlesex Arms, but it was actually used as an external shot for the Nags Head 
in the episode by me twice and this is where they all come back to celebrate Damien's christening but they don't come in around the front of the pub they enter through the back of the pub and I'm going to show you where Del parked his car and show you where Del nearly got smacked in the face by Cassandra as she left the pub so let's go around the back and have a look all right, so I've just walked up the side road. There's a, there's a car park around the back of the pub and Del would have driven up that in his Prattmobile and he parked it just where this blue car is, is here. But he didn't park it square like that's parked. He parked his uh, diagonally. <laughs> and then there was a car next to the Prattmobile and then next to the Prattmobile was the three-wheeler. So the three-wheeler would, would have been parked about here because uh, Rodney, Rodney was driving that and he'd already come onto the pub. So this is the back of the pub. Del would have parked there. He would have walked along there. This has been encased now by a fence. Uh, but the uh, the windows behind there look original to the scene. But they would have walked along uh, the back there. there. There's an extension to the pub over there, which is not in uh, which is not in the uh, the episode. And it looks like they've painted the door. I can't actually go in here without going in the pub and walking through the pub. Uh, but it looks like the doors are the same. It looks like they've just painted the doors. And what's quite nice is there's an air vent about there. There's an air vent which is in shot as Dell walks up to the doors, just as Cassandra comes out and almost smacks him in the face. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so this is the, um, the Middlesex Arms. This was used as an exterior for the nags head in the episode Miami Twice. So behind me here, this is Sotheby's and this is where they sold the Harrison Lesser watch for 6.2 million pounds. That's almost 3 million pounds each. The van would have been parked just outside. There was a little canopy there at the time. They would have walked out, got in the van and that famous scene of them shaking the van. So this is the Sotheby's. So I've actually got with me my own watch today and unfortunately it's a bank holiday Monday so they're shut so I can't put it in an auction so I'll have to come back but this is Sotheby, uh, Sotheby's New Bond Street and this is where Dell and Rodney sold their watch for 6.2 million pounds so there we go then 40 locations celebrating 40 years of only fours and horses it's been an absolutely fantastic couple of weeks I've been revisiting these locations running the scenes through my head I love our only fours and horses and uh, and so do you as well and I'm finishing off my journey here in what is a pop-up Nags Head pub. Check this out. Check this out. I'll just pan around so you can see it. This has all been done to celebrate the 40th uh, anniversary of Rally Pools and Horses by uh, uh, Gold. Gold TV, they've done this. So I'm going to go to the bar. As I understand it, they're doing drinks at 1981 prices and I think a pint is 83p. <laughs> so I hope you've enjoyed the video. And um, here's to another 40 years of Only Fours and Horses. Happy birthday, Only Fours and Horses.